My good friend Vince is a director of maintenance at a summer camp. One year they were building a beach, so he hired a backhoe. While they were digging, the backhoe started slipping and sliding into the lake. The more the operator tried to drive out, the more the heavy machine sunk into the boggy shore. Without missing a beat, he rotated the cab, he reached out with the digger arm, and he pulled himself out of the lake. Describing this to me, and I'll never forget his words, Vince said to me, he says, Dave, you should have seen this guy. He was like a fighter pilot. Nothing phased him. Like a fighter pilot. We have this romantic image of a pilot facing an unraveling situation, staying calm, staying effective, and saving the day. We could say that that backhoe operator was up to the challenge. I want you to think about those words for a moment, up to the challenge. Sometimes we are, and sometimes we're not. There are times we are going to fail, and I contend that failure is actually good for us. You see, it's our complexity that enables us to be effective in certain situations and struggle in others. But it's our adaptability that enables us to learn through adversity. You will be a different person at the end of this talk than you were at the beginning. The cool part is this is happening every moment of your lives. You are adaptive and complex. We're going to take a simple look at this concept today in our short time. Settled science says we have three brains. We're going to talk about just two of them today, the neocortex, or the new brain, and the amygdala, often referred to as the lizard brain. Now, the neocortex is all about your executive function, perceiving, reasoning, processing, language. This is where we do our decision-making. This is where the rational adult lives. Our amygdala, on the other hand, has our fight, flight, food, and friend response. It's all about basic survival. Now, these two brains work in concert with each other. The neocortex is all about learning and growing and evolving, while the amygdala is all about basic survival, breathing, blinking, and yes, running away from danger. This served us very, very well when we were trying to avoid becoming a saber-toothed tiger's lunch. But the amygdala is a simple brain, and we're dealing with a complex world. Now, when we are posed with a threat, our amygdala, very quick reacting, steps in to save the day, to protect us. It's called amygdala hijack. Some of you may have heard about this. But that's the simple description. It's a little bit more complex than that. You see, there's a trade-off. When we experience amygdala hijack, we start to lose our executive function. Now, it's not a simple binary response. As we develop, the amygdala hijack continues to develop. We start to lose options and lose options. We effectively lose IQ points until eventually we're left with just two options, fight or flight. When we have the time, when we have the calmness, we do the math. We make a logical decision. But that takes time and energy. I'm going to ask you a question. Just shout out the answer. What's 5 plus 7? Anyone? 12, thank you so much. What's 64 times 143? Okay, now notice your reaction, right? Everyone was like, 12, no problem, bring it on. <laughs> 64 times 140, yeah, good one, fun. Okay, the reason that we react that way is because it takes more energy. This is a question that requires our neocortex, which spends more energy than our amygdala. And part of our survival response, part of our, our survival instinct is to conserve our energy, to, to preserve it. So we don't want to use that extra higher energy vehicle whenever we can avoid it. The good news is, through some practice, we can reduce the energy draw, what it takes to do that. Now, this is where resilience comes in. Resilience is a complex and adaptive response to today's complex world. And it requires our neocortex. So we're going to take a look at a model today. The seven. Resilience muscles model, as defined by Dr. Linda Hoops. And we're going to take a quick look at this today. And through deliberate practice, we can reduce the energy required to access these muscles. Now, we all have these muscles, and we all use them. Based on our life history, though, we've all developed them in different ways. Much the way a weightlifter is going to be more of a specialist, and a triathlete is going to be more effective across a wide range of endeavors, we too are going to be more of a specialist or more of a triathlete when it comes to dealing with today's challenges. Let's take a look at these muscles. I was introduced to them in 2014 when I completed my first profile. This is what we refer to as a mixed profile. With highs at 95 and lows of 2, I was overusing some muscles and underusing others. With highs in creativity and experimenting, 
I was the one volunteering for that project before it was even fully explained. And oh, by the way, I got five great ideas of how we can do this. You see, creativity is all about the new and the different and being okay with ambiguity. Experimenting, that's all about taking risk. It's about giving it a try. I was effectively leaping and then looking. In high school, I was voted most likely to come to an early demise. <laughs> you see, I had my driver's license on my 16th birthday, my motorcycle shortly thereafter, and my pilot's license on my 17th birthday. Okay, back to the profile. Now, we're going to take a look at each of these muscles and how they contribute to one's overall resilience. And much like biceps and triceps that are muscles that oppose each other, creativity and structure are opposing muscles. Remember, creativity is all about the new and the different and being okay with ambiguity. But structure is about working through those details, about removing ambiguity. As you can imagine, in today's VUCA world, these two are very important. Priorities balances with experimenting. Remember, experimenting is taking a risk, giving it a try. Priorities is all about focusing your energy, making sure that you're focusing on your priorities and not someone else's. This is that nice balance of having an adventurer, but yet still having the safety of home base, staying grounded. The one that really surprised me, though, was positivity and confidence. This was not me. I'm a confident person. I'm a positive person. I was confident that would, things would work out, that I could even turn it down into an up. I was positive. I was confident. I got this was my motto. In 2014, I was pretty down. I was not happy with this, but I knew I could fix it. The one we haven't discussed yet is connection. Now, this is the muscle we use to reach out for help, to call for assistance. A lot of times we think about reaching out for help as a sign of weakness, but it's actually a strength. We need our tribe. We need our team. In balance, you are a triathlete, ready to take on a wide range of challenges. When some muscles are overused relative to others, you're a weightlifter. You're great in, in some situations and struggle in others. The good news is, through deliberate practice, we can develop these muscles. You see, this is the adaptive part about the complex and adaptive systems that we are. Your brain is constantly rewiring itself, creating new neural pathways. Now, I want you to think about what it was like to learn an instrument or drive a car, ride a bike. It was hard work. But you practiced, practiced, and practiced. And as you practiced and practiced and practiced, it became easier. What was happening in your brain is it was creating a new neural pathway and then as you practice, it strengthened that neural pathway. So as you practice and practice and practice, those neural pathways become stronger and stronger, and it takes less energy to access them. And by doing this, what we can do is we can actually prevent amygdala hijack, because now it's going to take less energy to access those resilience muscles, those muscles that we need to deal with today's complex problems. Do we have any violinists here today? Any violinists? You've grown an extra ridge on the side of your brain over here on the right. Einstein had it. Kind of cool, eh? All right. So with this, armed with this new knowledge, I set about working on developing my resilience. How could I strengthen my balance? I enlisted the support of others. I put small reminders in place, and I, I worked on these muscles. For example, for priorities, I had to remind myself that every yes was a no to something else. Whenever I said yes to something, I had to think about what I was saying no to. And to say no to a request, I needed to think about what I was saying yes to. This was the toughest one for me. Special thanks to my wife, Dolores, for helping me with that one. For structure, I, did, I entered reminders into my calendar. Do small, simple little things to develop the muscles so they'd be available when needed. And boy, were they needed. Let me share with you what was happening in my life in 2017. My brother decided to take mom for one last trip to Florida before she entered palliative care. This was the start of an 18-month-long bitter family feud that finished when mom passed. During all of that, I was facing multiple upheavals at work, including over 100% turnover and being acquired. And if that was not enough, my lovely wife and partner of 30 years was facing some potentially life-altering health issues. There's a lot going on. This is prime time for some unproductive behavior for amygdala hijack. Then in September, it all came to a head. On the weekends, I volunteer as a flight instructor at a local glider club. I was taking a student up for an instructional flight, and I was not 100% there. The stage was set. 
we took off, we climbed to release altitude, and we started the lesson for that day. As you can imagine, with all my distraction, I was having a hard time concentrating. This was complicated by the fact that I was having difficulty communicating with my student. I was asking for a right turn, getting a left turn, this sort of thing. I'd allowed us to venture too far out, and we were not going to make it home. This is when I realized I needed to draw on my resilience to get us out of this mess. For some context, let me explain to you some details. Since gliders don't have engines, our range is defined by our altitude. The higher we are, the further we can go. As a glider pilot, I need to carefully monitor my location and altitude to make sure that I'm going to make it home. On a good day, we can use rising air currents to climb higher and hence extend our range. There was no such lift on this day. So I was now faced with what we refer to as an outlanding, somewhere in that area. Now, the real danger here is that I had lost situational awareness. As I realized this, I had to get my thoughts and gather them quickly. And I only had a few minutes, because in less than five minutes, we were going to be on the ground. The good news is, my resilience paid off. All that hard work that I've been doing over the last couple of years. I was able to prevent amygdala hijack, stay effective, keep control, land the plane in a small private airstrip, an airstrip that was too narrow for my glider's long wings. But with all my faculties restored, I carefully landed on the center line, moved off to the side, and deliberately put the right wing on the ground, thus preventing a dangerous ground loop. With us all safely on the ground, I realized I needed to focus my energies and deal with the matters at hand. I stopped flying for the rest of that season. I was able to negotiate the family politics, to support my sister and be there for my mom's final steps. I was able to lead my team as we formed and reformed and merged with our new parent company. And most importantly, I was able to be there for my lovely wife. Challenge is hard. It takes energy. Energy that our brains do not want to spend. But we need challenge in order to grow and evolve. Not all of us, though, experience positive development when it comes to challenge. This is where mindset comes in. According to Dr. DeWick, we have two mindsets, fixed and growth. A fixed mindset says, I cannot play the piano. A growth mindset says, I cannot play the piano, yet. We are dynamic and we have a choice. We can use deliberate practice to establish and maintain that growth mindset. My first resilience profile was a wake-up call. I had some good muscles. And when the situation was exactly right, I was that backhoe operator. But I had no range. Armed with this new knowledge, I set about training to develop my resilience muscles. I made small hassles as exercises. I refocused my outlook on my growth. And I developed my muscles through deliberate practice. We are dynamic, and we are complex. And we have a choice. We can choose to accept our current situation, our current skills, or we can choose to leverage our experiences to develop our resilience. I'm a work in progress, but I invite you to join me on this wondrous journey as we leverage this down world to tune up our personal resilience. Thank you very much.